Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Uh, first, uh, how's this weather graphic? And all we have on here is a dense fog advisory for the greater Anchorage area uh, until 10 p.m. Sunday evening, this evening. And uh, after that, uh, smoky conditions should improve a little bit since the wind flow is tending to turn more northwest and carry it, and that'll carry it off in the other direction. And there's also a uh, flood warning out due to snow melt with the high freezing levels for the Yentna River near Fr Fish Creek. And uh, local flooding is expected to occur in that area. If, um, that warning is out uh, for the next couple of days. So moving on to the fire danger map, a little bit uh, different than what we saw yesterday. Uh, still a good chunk of extreme fire danger up here with the upper Yukon Valley. And uh, actually now some extreme fire danger showing up in the Susitna Valley, especially the central southern Susitna Valley uh, here today. And also a little bit in the Copper River Basin, a little more widespread in the high fire danger here. Temperatures rising up uh, in the upper 80s or mid 80s to lower 90s in this area and high fire danger extending on down to the southwest and still in the Kobuk Valley. And moving on to satellite imagery for, let's, uh, for this afternoon, we've got uh, clouds streaming northeastward here, kind of a washing out front associated with this, uh, real hard to define here now uh, currently, but uh, Pretty light rainfall amounts over the southwest interior, just a few hundredths of an inch, and everybody had less than tenth of an inch. And then some moisture sliding northward here along the Alaska Range, Cuscombe Valley, uh, beginning to develop some thunderstorm activity here. Nothing widespread yet, uh, but uh, had some strikes over the Talkeetna Mountains and uh, also back along the northwest part of the uh, Western Alaska Range near Denali. Actually, it hasn't happened yet, but it will. And uh, into the Tana Valley. Otherwise, a lot of clear skies here, Kodiak Island, up into southern Alaska, except for the uh, smoke that we have from the Kenai Peninsula fire, and then the uh, smoke also here in the interior from the central Tana Valley westward, uh, underneath the cloud deck here in that area. Low clouds and fog off the southeast coast and back in across the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, burning off again over the southern panhandle today, but still in over Dixon entrance and right up along the coastline here. Uh, looks like all the way up along the North Gulf Coast, uh, Yakutat, uh, back to Cape Yakutaga. Didn't make it into Prince William Sound there. The islands blocked it out uh, from moving in there today. But you can see a pretty good clear area here from the Kenai Peninsula down into Kodiak Island and northward. And a little bit of clearing here St. Lawrence Island back down toward Nunavak Island, that uh, kind of uh, rebuilding of the high pressure here ahead of the next storm that's uh, pretty, uh, resulting in a pretty massive cloud shield here across the Aleutians and Bering Sea with uh, rainfall already about third of an inch falling at ADAC uh, during the 12 hour period ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon. And that whole system is moving north, northeastward across the Bering Sea with very little eastward progression. This front here really washing out uh, on the chart, uh, actually probably a trough in here. The old front right through here, this portion uh, so washed up, I probably shouldn't even have drawn it in there. A little better up here to the northwest with uh, anywhere from a quarter inch to uh, maybe a third of an inch of rain falling in the western Brooks Range area today. Minchumina picked up four tenths of an inch of precipitation, possibly had a thunderstorm move across them there with one of the showers. Otherwise, uh, rainfall amounts, uh, as I mentioned, were pretty light. Ambler did pick up about uh, 14 hundredths of an inch of precipitation. And uh, otherwise, sunshine, temperatures rising into the lower 90s. 
at Northway, 91 degrees, 3 p.m. this afternoon, and in the Copper River Basin, 91 also recorded at uh, Chisana and Toke, not far behind Northway, with 89 degrees, and temperatures in the mid 80s or lower 80s in the Susitna Valley, uh, up into the mid 80s, some areas of the Kenai Peninsula, and also uh, mid to upper 80s over the Copper River Basin, 86 degrees at Gulcana. And the southeast coast, some sunshine breaking out, uh, temperatures in the 60s to lower to mid 70s there. And uh, of course, cooler back here to the west with the shower conditions and the uh, clouds down into the 50s. Here's that uh, warm front spreading rain up and eastward here. Hasn't reached Nikolsky yet. In fact, still a fair distance off to your west. But uh, again, from ADAC all the way back to Shimia, uh, solid rain with fog and wind's not too much of a problem. Although the eastern Arctic coast, it gusts 30, 35 miles an hour uh, during the day today with uh, uh, breezy conditions developing here over the Aleutians. And for tonight, you'll see uh, the first of two low centers tracks northward there across the western Aleutians and good southwest flow both at the surface and the loft is going to drive that rainfall into the Perbaloff. So about St. Matthew Island late tonight, high pressure redeveloping here over Bristol Bay and ridging northward across the Yukon Cusquam Delta in toward Norton Sound. And on the northwest side of that, we got a series of uh, weak troughs, a lot of leftover moisture tracking northeastward. And that'll just bring surges of uh, light rain, fog, and drizzle from the eastern Arctic coast. Another surge here over the northwest interior. And yet another one there over St. Lawrence Island. And then thunderstorms this evening along this trough axis from possibly the Talkeetna Mountains up into the central Alaska Range into the eastern Tanana Valley. And uh, a lot of clouds, and then that'll be diminishing after midnight. And then south of the Alaska Range, so it should be mostly clear. We have this trough axis dropping southward. So that's going to turn the wind flow around into the more of an offshore northwest, west-northwest direction here across the Kenai Peninsula and Cook Inlet. And that'll help uh, end that dense smoke advisory uh, here for the uh, Anchorage area, at least for the time being. Otherwise, low clouds and fog, Gulf of Alaska along the southeast coast. Outlook for tomorrow, not much change, partly to mostly sunny again after the morning low clouds and fog over the mostly over the southern inside waters, and then that's going to hang again most of the day along the coast. And uh, th isolated thunderstorm possible over the far eastern Alaska range of Besna, maybe to Toke Northway, those areas. And that's about it. Otherwise, most of it will be off into Canada. Less shower activity and clouds up over the north slope and the Arctic coast due to the advance of this next system which drives rain all the way up to the south side of the Seward Peninsula by tomorrow afternoon. And then across the Yukon Cusquam Delta, possibly as far northeast as Bethel. So rain, breezy conditions, Perbaloff, St. Lawrence Island southward, looks like gale force winds with rain, possibly moderate to heavy at times, all the way down to Adak and Atka with the next low center pulling up right to the western Aleutians. And the outlook for Tuesday, that low center tracks northward here and the front edge is slowly eastward. A good chunk of moisture in the form of rain will move into the northwest part of the state there, especially along the southern slopes of the Brooks Range and Duong Mountains, lighter amounts over the north slope, and high pressure here holding, and that's going to keep it mostly sunny, south central Alaska up in the, over the eastern interior. Lows for tonight, uh, 50s to near 60 over the eastern interior, 40s out to the west, and highs tomorrow, uh, 70 to 80 south central Alaska, 65 to 73 over the uh, eastern interior, and pushing 80 over the Panhandle. Lows for Tuesday morning, pretty mild again. Uh, mid 50s, mid to upper 50s, give or take here, South Central Alaska, and about the same in the Panhandle there, with 40s, lower 50s, Central Interior, lower 40s on the Arctic coast, about the same in the Aleutians, followed by highs a little warmer here in the Susitna Valley, say 73 to 81 there, right down into the Kenai Peninsula, Copper River Basin pushing near 80 again, and back into the 70s over the Tanana and Eastern Interior. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, again, uh, a lot of IFR with the uh, clouds, moisture, and rain that's uh, sliding northeastward across the Bering Sea from the uh, central western Aleutians. So we've got IFR right up along the coast here in across uh, northern Norton Sound, southern Seward Peninsula, up along the uh, western Brooks Range, 
and maybe the central Arctic coast or so. Also, uh, early on, possible IFR here along the Alaska Range and possibly there uh, due to the smoke here over the inland areas of uh, the Kenai Peninsula and a lot of IFR, low clouds fog along and right along the southeast coast. And for the afternoon, improves down over the southern areas from the IFR you had uh, to start the day with. Uh, still a little bit of marginal left over, but not too bad. VFR for the remainder of the panhandle with the uh, marginal VFR and IFR hanging right along the coast. Basically VFR here with a patch of maybe marginal there for the eastern Alaska range, but uh, generally VFR, Brooks Range, occasionally marginal, improving in the afternoon actually, and the IFR stays off the Arctic coast but comes down through the Bering Strait and into the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, Fox Islands, though you could break out to some uh, VFR type weather tomorrow afternoon as well as the Pribilofs and the uh, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. Outlook for Tuesday morning. Not much change out here over the Bering Sea except now we've got IFR into the uh, as far east as uh, Unalaska Island, actually into the western Alaska Peninsula. Some IFR here along the southwest coast and then IFR up and mostly off the Arctic coast, gets a little close here on the east side, VFR in the interior, and IFR again holding right along or a little bit inland there of the outer coastline of the Pan Am, redeveloping here over the southern areas once again, and then that burns off in the afternoon or probably by late morning there over the southern Pan Am for VFR conditions, except for the west coast of Prince Oils Island, possibly Port Alexander, Sitka, I think will be okay, VFR here, Kodiak Island, uh, South Central Alaska, North Gulf Coast here, as you can see, all the way up to the Arctic Coast, North Slope, lower conditions here. Uh, marginal VFR, inland areas of the uh, west coast here, with some possible IFR, south side of the DeLong Mountains, and lots of IFR continuing Bering Strait, Aleutians, Bering Sea, eastward here into Togiak Bay, Cape Nuenam to Nunavak Island. Passes, Anatovic uh, starting out marginal, improving to VFR, probably by noontime. That same forecast good for Adigan as well. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, look for VFR, both passes there. And uh, rainy, could uh, start out marginal and then become VFR with uh, windy. Could start out IFR actually, or I, I think it'll be marginal by tomorrow morning and then that'll improve to VFR conditions uh, throughout the day or by probably midday and into the afternoon. Isabel, same trend, starting out possible marginal VFR becoming VFR. Mentasta though, VFR. Tanita, VFR. And Portage, VFR. Early on could be some uh, low stuff here uh, on the eastern entrance, but that'll become VFR uh, during the later part of the morning. And for Chilkoot and White, another VFR day. Freezing levels, uh, disturbance moving northeastward here. Upper level troughs, so we got a little uh, 6,000 foot freezing levels there. Upper ridge here down the Gulf of Alaska, actually south of the Alaska Peninsula and into the Gulf. And a huge area, 12,000 foot freezing levels there and across the Panhandle, southern Alaska. And right along the Aleutians, falling back to about 8,000 over the northern Bering Sea. Icing, lots of moisture caught up in southwest flow here, a couple of systems. But way above 14,000 feet here. And even the northern Bering Sea, you got to get up above 10,000 feet to see any icing there. And then kind of uh, some weak surges of moisture, one here on the south or along the western mountains there, Brooks Range and along mountains. And then possible light to isolated moderate rime there for the central eastern Arctic coast. And that's about it. Jet stream, here's that huge ridge tomorrow, midday, uh, right in over southern Alaska into the Yukon. And then that jet here carrying 80 knot winds, pushing all that moisture up to the northeast. And 9,000 feet southwest flow here, 25 to 45 knots. Uh, pretty brisk, uh, diminishing as you get into the interior. 3,000 feet, about the same pattern. Southwest flow here ahead of those two systems, up to its 45 knots. Westerly is 10 to 20 in the interior. Turbulence, occasional light to isolate moderate chop here. Central Aleutians over to Unmac Island. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Dave Snyder and joining me today is Cindy Preller. She's the Tsunami Program Manager for Alaska Region's National Weather Service. And Cindy, we hear a lot about tsunamis in the news, probably a lot more than we used to, but let's remind everybody, what is a tsunami? 
Thanks for having me, Dave. Sure. A uh, tsunami is basically, it's really simple, it's just a disturbance in the water column. Uh -huh. So the entire water column from the seafloor to the sea surface is disturbed by something major, okay. usually a major earthquake. But it can also be a volcanic eruption, even an asteroid. Landslide is uh, especially dangerous. Okay, so if I'm sitting in my bathtub and I drop a bath toy, that could be a bathtub tsunami. It is absolutely a bathtub tsunami. Okay, very mm -hmm. good. So Alaska is one of the states, or maybe the state, with the greatest amount of coastline. So tsunamis are a pretty major risk here in Alaska. Who is most at risk? Yeah, Alaska is uh, significant. We actually make most of the Pacific tsunamis wow, okay. on the Aleutian Trench. Mm -hmm. um, and it's where the Pacific Plate is subducting underneath the, um, uh, the American Plate. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we produce some very large, great, great quakes, and of course, the most at risk is the Aleutian Trench. Okay. But that extends into southeast, uh, south central Alaska as well. Mm -hmm. They're at huge risk, and then southeast Alaska's risk is really mostly landslide focused. Okay. Are there any places along the Alaskan coastline that don't have a tsunami risk, or at least a very, very low risk? Absolutely. The Bering Sea's risk is very low, mm -hmm. and the Arctic's risk is very low as well. Okay, so when we're talking about tsunami dangers, those are places that need to be monitored, but probably not really. No, I mean, I won't say never. Yeah, sure. Because I know you better. Can. Science knows better. Right, so Very good. near to never. Okay, <laughs> well, let's just say you're on the coast anywhere in Alaska. What are warning signs that tsunami uh, dangers are, are threatening you right now? This is super important because Alaska's greatest risk, especially mm -hmm. out on the Aleutians in South Central, is a near field tsunami. And then, okay. of course, the landslides in Southeast, it's even more intense because we so can't. So, shorter warning time? Sh no warning time. Okay. The earthquake is the warning. Okay. And that is the most important thing for anybody to, to remember. The water can arrive in less than two minutes. Two minutes, wow. Yeah, at the National Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, mm -hmm. we need to get the warning out in five minutes. So, for those near field tsunamis, mm -hmm. It's the earthquake is the warning. So okay. if you feel shaking, okay. and of course the first thing you do is drop cover and hold, right. and you need to start counting okay. slowly to 20. The right way. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Oh, I, I teach kids to do it with their favorite things. So okay. one chocolate, two chocolate, three chocolate, chocolate but you can good. count anything you like. Okay. And if you're thinking of something happy, that mm -hmm. helps. Okay. Uh, especially helps kids, but it'll help your so psyche. So you don't speed up because you're getting stressed out. I right, see. right. It actually lowers your heart rate. Interesting. You know, okay. so if you think of something you love and um, and practice that, so you're in an earthquake, you're mm -hmm. under the table, you're next to the ocean. Okay. Right. Right. This is this is important if you're next to the ocean. Okay. If you're not next to the ocean, don't worry about it. Just stay in place, undercover. And you're talking about a mile, a quarter mile. What's what's close? Um. A mile, even a couple miles. Okay. You know, our rule of thumb used to be a mile inland was safe, but the last few tsunamis have taught mm -hmm. us otherwise. Okay. So, yeah, you know, in Japan we had inundation up to 10 miles. Right. So. Okay. And that was a big quake. That was a big so quake. So you have a quake, you're counting slowly to 20. To 20. What's next? And if you get to 20 and it's still mm -hmm. shaking, mm -hmm. you need to evacuate. Okay. And that is, um, that's scary. Yeah. Because you're that's evacuating a in a live event that's still shaking. Mm -hmm. You know, 1964 shook for four and a half minutes. Um, Indonesia shook for 12 minutes. Wow, right. Um, Japan, I think, shook for six. I'm not sure of that, but it was long. Anyway, more right. than 20 seconds. And that's a sign of a very major earthquake, the, mm -hmm. the worst. Well, 20 seconds is a magnitude seven. So that's okay. not the worst, but what a magnitude seven can do is trigger a landslide. Okay. And those landslides might be a submarine landslide, so mm -hmm. you won't see it, you won't hear it, you won't know it, and then okay. the water's moving. Okay. So that's really, really, really dangerous. That's what happened in 64 first. Seward, Valdez, Whittier all had mm -hmm. landslides first. Okay. And when you're talking about the water, the water is a warning sign too. What happens with the water that gives you a very easy visual sign that something's changing? Not guaranteed. It might go out, mm -hmm. it might go way out, really okay. fast, fast enough to leave the fish behind. Mm -hmm. But that's not guaranteed. It might just be a fast flood instead. Okay. So either way, if it's acting like a super fast rising tide, faster than a tide should rise, right. get out of there. Okay. And if it goes out really fast, get out of there. Yeah. You know, we lost a lot of lives because people will go check out the new tide pools sure. or pick up fish or shells or, you know, so. And it should feel weird. Right. You know, you should, it should be weird. So pay attention to those natural warning signs and how you feel because mm -hmm. 
those those are maybe the only clues you have. Right, and you know, sound also. Um, you okay. can hear a tsunami. It'll sound like a roaring train, maybe, okay. um, or it might sound silent because the water's been pulled out. Right, and that's pretty weird. Imagine camping yeah. at night yeah. near the beach, and all of a sudden you don't hear the ocean anymore. That would be different. That would be weird. Huh. Yeah. Okay. And then you also might hear blowing bubbles, and and that's actually from the pressure that's blowing the air out from the sand grains, rock grains. So if you hear blowing bubbles, that's a little weird. Okay. Or uh, clinking rocks, you know, like a rain stick. Uh -huh. So those are those are the sound signs. So the visual is rushing in or mm -hmm. rushing out and um, roaring, especially. Okay. Yeah. So it takes a lot of work to get people uh, and keep people aware of what the tsunami warning signs are and what their risks are around Alaska. And there's a website that can help them do that. Uh, where can they go online to get more information for their school, their home, their church, their business? Oh, there's several. Okay. Um, the National Tsunami Warning Center mm -hmm. has a website as well. And the easiest way to look that up is just NTWC. NTWC. Mm -hmm. The okay. URL is not uh, intuitive at all. Okay. Um, there's also um, ready.alaska.gov. The mm -hmm. state of Alaska has a lot of helpful stuff. Um, preparedness kits, they have, they have everything you need to get ready. Okay. And then um, for teachers and mm -hmm. others, there's a wonderful curriculum called um, Alaska Tsunami Education Program. Alaska Tsunami Education Program. Okay. And that's AK Tsunami. AK Tsunami. Okay, very good. Those are really good uh, tips to get more information and search that out and uh, help your own community stay safe with the threat of tsunamis around Alaska. Uh, next time we come back and talk to you some more about the Tsunami Ready Program and get more in depth on uh, how people can. Uh, learn more about the, the risks and, and what to do here in Alaska. So thank you for joining us today, Cindy. And next time on Alaska Weather Facts, more on tsunamis around Alaska. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis again. Not much change from what we had yesterday or the day before. Uh, still this open area north of the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, and then the heavier ice down near the coastline and uh, open here over the southern Chukchi Sea. And again, not a lot, no big changes expected for the next four or five days. Coastal water forecast southeast coast here on the south coast, northwest 20 knots with seas five feet, and northwest 15 or west northwest 15 on the north coast, four to five foot seas, south 15 for Lynn Canal. Seas running about three feet and really light winds, light variable winds with slight seas over the central and southern inside channels. And for Tuesday, south 15 for Northern Lynn Canal and northwest 15 for Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait west at 15 knots, seas three feet. And we've got uh, west northwest at 15 for the south coast of the Panhandle with five to six foot seas west 10 to 15 on the north coast there and seas are running five feet out uh, for prince william sound or the forecast that's out for prince william sound for tomorrow west winds 15 knots same thing for the eastern north gulf coast but we got small craft advisories for the western north gulf coast 25 knot winds out of the west and 30 knot winds for the barren islands as well as kamishak bay with uh, 11 foot seas there otherwise cook inlet much lighter southwest breeze at 10 knots Outlook for Tuesday, no change. Cook Inlet, southwest 10, west 25. Small craft advisories continue. Kamishak Bay to uh, the Barren Islands. Otherwise, uh, west-southwest 10 to 15 for the North Gulf Coast. Northwest 15, but see still two feet for Prince William Sound. And for Kodiak Island, west-northwest 25 knots. Good for small craft advisories for tomorrow. And then Sitkanak to Castle Cape, 20 knots out of the west. Otherwise, the Alaska Peninsula, lighter winds. South Southwest at 15 and Bristol Bay West at 15. Outlook for Tuesday, Southwest 15 for Bristol Bay. 30 knot winds out of the south on the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, 20 knot winds here on the Pacific side pick up to 25 knots from uh, Castle Cape all the way up across Kodiak Island waters. And for the Western Aleutians tomorrow, winds 20 knots there, but uh, we've got gales from about Amchitka Eastward here across Adak and Atka, south winds 35 knots, seas up to 13 feet, and southerlies at 25 knots. Uh, winds gradually increasing here across the Fox Islands, 15 to, well, 30 knots uh, tomorrow afternoon with seas running 4 to 9 feet. 
And then we've got some gales into the Fox Islands, especially Unmak Island there, south 35 knots, and Atka, south 35, Adak, probably lighter, and trending toward more northwesterly direction like we have out here to the west, north to northwest, at 20 with seas 8 to 10 feet. Southwest coast, south winds tomorrow, 25 to 30 knots. Small craft advisories also for the Perbolos or Southerlies at 30, southeast 30 for St. Matthew Island. Lighter winds for St. Lawrence Island, 20 knots, but still from the south. And those will pick up uh, on Tuesday for St. Lawrence Island as well as Norton Sound up to the small craft advisory levels with south winds right on down the southwest coast here at 30 knots, southwest 30 for St. Matthew Island. Gales in the forecast now for Tuesday for the Perviloff Island, south 35 and seas at 14 feet. 30 knot winds here from uh, Wales all the way up the west side of the Arctic coast in those zones, south 30 knots with seas at 8 feet, southwest 20 for the central coast, west southwest 15 to 20 for the east side. And for Tuesday, pretty light winds out of the south at 10 knots for the eastern Boulevard Sea coast, southeast 15 in the central coast, gradually increasing here down to, toward, uh, to Cape Beaufort. On down, we've got small craft advisories south southeast at 25. For tonight, again, uh, surges of moisture coming over the top of this ridge of high pressure over the southwest interior, so it'll keep it unsettled, occasionally damp with each one of those impulses passing by. Thunderstorms diminishing here with this trough over the uh, upper Tanah Valley, 40 mile country down to the Alaska Range. Stays mostly, will stay dry over the Copper River Basin in southern Alaska. Clear out here over the west southwest interior. Fog and low clouds along, in some cases over the inside waters. And this next system bringing wind and a good amount of moisture in the form of rain right up northeastward. But that's going to stay out to the west, except the northwest part of the state will be pretty, will get pretty wet. Uh, widespread air, area of rain here on Tuesday, sunny and mild in the east down to south central Alaska on down the Panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.